The Podcast Revolution Network is a collective of independent broadcasters banded together for mutual support, success, and to raise new voices to our platform. Our shows are made possible through listeners like you supporting our cause. For more information on supporting Podcast Revolution, please visit podrev.org. That's P-O-D-R-E-V dot org. Thank you. Well, hello, hello. How are you doing? How are you doing? This is the S. Anthony Says Podcast, and I am the S. Anthony Thomas, and this is episode number 246, 246. <laughs> hello, sass bastards. How are you doing? Well, folks, before we get started, I, of course, uh, as I, as I, uh, if you, if you follow me on Twitter and all of those other things, you know that I recently did an episode of the Mr. BS show with my pod homies in Colorado. I didn't actually go to Colorado. I was actually in New Jersey and they were in Colorado. Well, actually, I could have, I could have just let you believe I went to Colorado. It would have sounded, would sounded a lot more impressive. <clears throat> what I meant to say was I was actually there. <laughs> Wait a minute. If you listen to the show, you'll know that I'm not there. And I'll look bad. I'll look like I'm making stuff up. Okay, I was here in New Jersey, damn it. And they were in Colorado. But it doesn't matter. What is important was it was a great show. And I want to say to my brothers from the Mr. BS show, thank you very much for having me on. I had a blast. I thought I was going to have a blast anyway. But I had an even more, even more of a blast than the blast level that I anticipated. So it was an extra blast, my friends. And thank you very, very much for having me on it's called the mr bs show check it out check it out because i'm on the newest episode and then after that check it out because you're going to enjoy it yeah i said it and now the dopey ass show that i've been doing for three plus years (laughs) now folks let let me ask you this uh have you ever have you ever been you just kind of sit back and think you know i'm i'm in my 40s and I I consider myself a mature person. Okay, I don't make a lot of really dopey decisions. I I don't. And I think most people in their forties don't make a lot of dopey decisions. I'm not saying you're dopey decision proof. I'm just saying you're dopey decision light. You know. And as you get older, you make less dopey decisions. But I'm telling you right now, it's not always the way. Sometimes you become a little passive aggressive. Now this actually happened a long time ago. Um, but at that, at the age that I was of the, of what I'm about to talk about, I, I was still, there was still a higher level of maturity that I had exhibited, but I still decided to be a little immature. And I'll tell you what I'm talking about first, what I'm going to do and what I need to do is just draw you a picture. Okay. Um, say for the sake of argument, you have a nice apartment. Okay, and it's a nice living room. It looks good, but there's an imperfection in that apartment that is not really a big deal. It's not a structural problem. Your walls aren't going to fall in. None of that. But say you have drywall and it all looks nice. But in the corner, near the window, in the back, behind the plant or behind the lamp, there's a hole in the wall about the size of, let's just say, a deck of cards. Okay, somebody did something in your house that you didn't want them to do. They didn't listen to you. And boom, they made an indentation in the drywall. Didn't go all the way through, but it definitely left a big mark about the size of a deck of cards. That's what happened. Now, that's not what I'm talking about for me. I'm just using this as an example to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And say for the sake of argument, you you know that it's there, but after a while you've resigned yourself to the fact that it's there, but you want the person who made the, who caused the problem to take care of the problem. And they promised you that they would take care of the problem. And you thought that they were the kind of person who would do what they say. They call you up and tell you, I'm on the way over there. Just stay there. I know you're on your way out, but just stay there. I'm going to come over. I'm going to measure it. I'm going to see how much draw roll I need. I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to take it with me. I'm going to do the measuring and the double cutting and the triple cutting and all of that crap. And then I'm going to come back and slap it in there and fix it really quick. It's only going to take me about 30 minutes and it's done and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. And they tell you that crap and you sit there and they told you they were going to be there at three and it is now three they're not there but that's not a big deal if they're a couple of minutes late it's not a big deal it's now three fifteen. okay not a big deal they're probably caught up in traffic and now it's four and now it's four thirty. and you call them and you can't get them on the phone and you know they have a cell phone but the punk ass isn't answering it wait a second hmm 
and that was 5.30. I could have been doing some things. I could have been out of this house doing some stuff. What the hell? This guy told me, and now I can't even get in contact with him. I'm going to call later, man. And I know a friend of a friend of a friend, and maybe they know I'll call that friend of a friend of a friend, and you call that friend of a friend of a friend, and the friend of a friend of a friend calls their friend of a friend of a friend, and that friend calls that person using the same number you just called. Wait a second. And then that punk ass calls you back. Hey, man, I'm sorry. It was an emergency. You know, I'm sorry I didn't get it. I had to turn the phone off because this, that, or the other. And they give you an excuse that's a little bit out of the ordinary, but plausible because it's so ridiculous. You're thinking, okay, of course. You know, it had to have been something like that. I'm feeling bad because I, I was angry at the guy because these things he said happened to him. I mean, they're a little bit of a stretch, but I mean, that's the kind of thing that's such a stretch that you believe it because who's going to make that up, right? Not a big deal. And let's be honest, the hole in the wall, even though it's annoying because I want it fixed, I'm starting to get to the point where it doesn't bother me that much anyway, and he is going to fix it. So that's not a big deal. You talk to him the next day after his crisis is averted. He calls you back. I'm going to be there Saturday. I know you're going to be there Saturday. I got to go out, dude. Okay, well, uh, what time you got to go out? I got to go out for it. Not a problem. I'll be there i will be there at, at one o'clock and i'll have it all done you i'll be done the worst case scenario two o'clock not a problem that's what that gives you two hours to do what you got to do and get out of the house and you're thinking okay that's prime that sounds great he's gonna come here fix this crap i mean it's not that big of a deal it's a it's the size of a deck of cards all you gotta do is chop that crap out go there get the thing come back slap it in glue 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 tape 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 paint 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 out not a problem it's one o'clock he's not there One thirty. still not there too still not there Three forty-five. what the hell for you gotta go you leave and this happens again and 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 again that's the situation that i found myself in someone did something to something of mine that caused that was that made the uh, repair necessary only cosmetic and in the and, and just like i described just now i had gotten used to the damage that had been caused because it wasn't overwhelming it wasn't really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things i could have had the same thing happen through my actions in another way and i would have just said ah screw it but this was a situation where their negligence caused this injury in quotes and they immediately said, I'll take care of it, S. I'll take care of it. I want you to think that I'm a person who stands for what he believes in and does the right thing. And that's what the dude said. I described to you how frustrating the scenario was with the with the wall, which was a fake scenario that I put together just to give you an idea what I was talking about. And I was in the same situation. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. And the whole time I'm thinking, we live in California at the time. It's a big state. Oh, yeah. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Why don't I just take this guy out on a friend's boat and then push his punk ass over the side? Now, granted, I know what you're thinking. Your friend has a boat. Yeah, one of those rowboats. I don't have that many rich friends. Shut up, punks. Back to the story. <laughs> And he keeps playing those games and keeps playing those games and keeps playing those games. And it's frustrating to me. And I know there's a part of me that wants to just ball up my hand and punch him in the mouth. But I'm not going to do that because I'm not that type of guy. Maybe I'll keep my hand open and slap the crap out of him. Not going to do that. I'm not that type of guy anymore. Not going to do it. There's no chance of me doing that. Not going to do the small claims court thing. I don't have that kind of time. My schedule is packed. That's why it's really, really frustrating when this piece of human. OK, I'm not going to call him names. He's a piece of crap. When this piece of crap didn't do what he's supposed to do, didn't repair my, quote, injury, unquote, when it was all his punk ass fault. But here's something that was making it wonderful. Here's something that made the whole thing great because I learned to live with the quote injury unquote the repair that needed to be done. I started to get used to the fact that that injury existed and got used to it. And it was really not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. But here's the thing as something I want to add to the story. So, you know, what's about to happen next. You see, the guy that was supposed to repair my quote injury unquote lived near me. 
so close that he had family that lived even nearer to me and his family lived so near to me to go see his family he had to go past me there was no other way to get to his family but to go past me so this punk ass bastard who kept putting off and putting off and putting off the repair to the injury 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 in quotes that he caused ha <laughs> his punk ass couldn't go see his family as much as he wanted to because he knew what would happen if he saw me i wasn't going to drop kick him i was not going to get into the running position run at him at a high rate of speed jump until i'm horizontal and bounce my size 12s off his chest aka known as drop kick the bastard i wasn't going to do that but he knew i was going to just ask him what the hell is going on and i would make him sit there and explain to me what the hell was going on and he'd have to come up with another bs excuse for what's coming going on and i knew for a fact i just me getting on his ass like that ruined his 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 time with his family it actually made him not be able to come and see his relatives as much as he wanted to because he was afraid i was there i know for a fact one time i did not park in front of my spot and he didn't see my car the car i had at the time that was pre my only that was pre mighty that was pre the mighty toyota camry he didn't see my car in front of that house and he thought he had free reign and he pulled up and i pulled around the corner i was not looking for him i just happened to not be in front of my house at the time but it was perfect he gets out of the car with a smile and then i pull around the corner and he sees me and i could almost hear the music in the background as his smile oozed off his face ran down his shirt like some sauce some some pasta that he ate sloppily ran down his shirt well it wasn't really okay it was just a smile oozing off his face but i'm trying to draw you a visual and i watched it melt off of his face and i got out of the car and he he saw my look and I started walking towards him and he had this look on his face like oh crap dad caught me dad walked into the room and caught me holding up a magazine in one hand and a part of my body in another hand and he caught me what's he gonna say what's dad gonna say that's the level of embarrassment on his face not that I've ever been in that position because as a teenager I was smart enough to lock the door and turn on the radio <laughs> back to the story I walk up to his punk ass and I look at him and I don't even say anything. I'm just waiting for him. To, well, okay, yes, you know, I'm, I, 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 I was going to, you know, I, I was looking for you, you know. I came by the other day that time and, you know, and you weren't there. I guess you were at the beach or something, you know. Maybe you were doing one of them comedy shows or something, you know. How's comedy going? I saw you on BET, man. How's it going? You know, it was really funny. To, how's comedy going? I, yeah, I heard you on the radio. How's, how's comedy going, man? Like, hey, hey, you got a nice car right there, man. And I hadn't said anything to the bastard yet i just looked at him and had a slight look of disgust on my mouth part of my face and the eyes part of my face had anger the bottom half disgust the top half anger and i walked up to him and i didn't get close enough to him where he thought i was going to smack the crap out of him because as i said before i'm not going to do that but i got close enough to him so he knew i meant business and i said fix my stuff dude okay man all right what we're gonna do is we get be and he gave me some more lip service but this time i was prepared for the bs i was prepared for his punk ass not to show up so i just continued on with my plans as if he wasn't going to be there i knew he wasn't going to show before i actually canceled stuff moved stuff to prepare for him to show up i now know he's not going to show up i now know his punk ass is not reliable so there was no reason for me no reason for me no reason for me to stop and wait for his punk ass so i didn't so as it turns out, nothing really changed for me. I was able to do where I wanted to go. I was able to go see my girlfriend and we can take each other to Bang Central. I was able to go hang out with friends. I was able to go do auditions. I was able to go do shows. The whole time he's avoiding me and I ain't even there. I even went so far as to leave my car in front of my house and borrow a friend's car knowing I mean, my car was like one of those, you know, when sometimes a police officer will just kind of leave their car someplace by a stop sign where people notoriously do rolling stop 
perhaps that guy someplace he having a cup of coffee or something like that. He's not even there, but just his car alone changed his behavior. I know for a fact that this piece of crap probably went to go visit his family, saw my car in front of his, my apartment and went, oh, crap, and went the other way, not realizing I had set a trap for his punk ass and he didn't get to see his family because of an empty car. That's what you get, punk. That's what you get. And I got news for you, my friends. I wasn't done there. At this point, I had gotten to the point where I had resigned myself to the point where it was never going to happen. I was never going to get my car fixed. He was always going to play games. And now it was time for me to turn on the passive aggressive war machine. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, whenever I saw him, I didn't even say anything but one phrase, one phrase only. I would see him around town and he I'd walk up behind him. He'd be in a supermarket and I'd walk up behind him and I'm going to have to curse because I had a curse word in it. So I want to prepare you for it. It's not a hard curse word. It's just the word shit. But I have it in this phrase. So I'm just going to let you know that's going to happen. I walk up behind him. He's at the supermarket. I'm at the supermarket. He does not see me. He's there buying some breath mints. Probably because his breath stinks as much as his ability to do something that he promises to do. And I walked up behind him. Fix my shit, man. Huh? Oh, how you doing, ass? Oh, man, you scared me. I said, "Uh uh-huh. You know why I scared you? Why? Because you need to fix my shit, man. Okay, I'm going to fix your shit on Thursday. I knew he wasn't going to be there Thursday. I actually had someone at my house hanging out there. I said, if the guy shows up, fine, but you need to use my computer. Go right ahead. Just lock up when you leave. It was a friend of mine. His computer got effed up, and he wanted to use mine. Not a problem. Good friend. Someone whose word actually means something. And I said, go ahead, man. Don't worry about it. I trust you. Boop, 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 boop. And I said, do me a favor. If a guy actually shows up, he won't but if he does let him in let him do his work and then wait for him to leave and then when he leaves lock up after him okay not a problem mess my friend was there the whole time oh yeah my friend was there the whole time my car was there the whole time oh yeah so he would think i was still there and they thus have no excuse for not going in there and guess what happened my friend left at seven o'clock after doing his research on my computer and he went home i asked him did a guy come back to fix the thing that needed nobody came by really that's all i needed to know I run into that lying sack of crap again this time at a newsstand. He's looking at porno pornography. And I'm not the kind of person that wants to draw attention to a guy trying to slide and look at pornography. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes, I did. Fix my shit, man. Oh, what? Yes, hey, hey, I went to your house the other day, but there was nobody there. So I, did, I was going to, I even, I even have the drywall in my hand. and the, Okay, not a problem, dude. Not a problem. I understand. Sometimes schedules get mixed up. So what we're going to do right now, my friend, is how about this? How about you come over Saturday? How about that? Okay, we'll be there Saturday. And he did not show up Saturday. Didn't expect him to show up Saturday. Guess what? I also wasn't there Saturday because I knew his punk ass wasn't going to show up Saturday. Why? Because he's a sack of crap. But then something weird started to happen. Oh, yeah. I became friendly with his relatives who lived really close by. How friendly? So friendly that they, hey, yes, whenever they see me. I'm sorry about him not doing that thing. Oh, it is what it is. (laughs) And I'm driving by one day and I see them moving a couch. And I say, hey, what's going on, everybody? You having trouble with that couch? Yeah, could you help us move it? Not a problem. Park the car a couple of houses up. I get into the thing. I walk back up. I help them carry the couch into the house. I pull it up the steps. I put it in the thing. I help them up the thing and I twist the thing. And we move up the steps and across the thing and move to the thing. But pop the pop. And the chair is now perfectly placed in the home. And as it turns out, the person who was moving the product around, moving the chair in the house, moving the chair in the house, said to me, you know what? I normally, when people help me move stuff, I, get, I hook them up with some pizzas and, and drinks. We already have the pizzas and drinks here. And you were a big help getting us. Th- would you mind have, would you like to have some pizza and a couple of sodas? No problem. And we're sitting there laughing and joking. And then that guy who was supposed to do something for me, as it turns out, was supposed to have helped them move the couch. And he conveniently showed up. 17 minutes after it was done. What a coincidence. He walks up the steps. I hear his voice. 
He's laughing and joking with his relatives. Hey, oh, I'm sorry I missed the chair. <laughs> and he comes into the kitchen and he wants to get something out of the refrigerator to get something to drink. And he sees me sitting there enjoying my pizza and soda. And I, all of a sudden we're in the ref- we're in the kitchen by ourselves. So his relatives are in the other room. He goes to the refrigerator and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him and he's looking at me and I'm looking at him 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 and I'm looking at him. Why did I say I'm looking at him a bunch of more times? Because he's knows he's in the kitchen with me and he's trying not to look at me as he's opening his soda and taking his pizza, trying to face in another direction and trying to ease out, even though I'm looking at him and 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 looking at him. And he turns around to say something to me. He goes, Oh, yes. Oh, by the way, I said, fix my shit, man. (laughs) It had gotten to the point now where I was feeling so much joy torturing this human piece of crap for not fixing my stuff that he broke the injury he had caused he didn't repair it and it took him a long time i enjoyed every second of torturing that piece of crap i loved every second of it because it was great it was more fun than having my car actually fixed i loved every second of it i love to see that stupid look on his stupid face i loved it and eventually he fixed my shit man and it was great but as it turns out i wasn't there when he fixed it he fixed it when a friend was there i came back and even though it was not all dent in the Well, let's just say, even though the problem was not fixed and it was fixed, it was fixed inadequately. It was actually slightly better, but not good enough. He could have fixed it. He could have done it properly, but he didn't do it properly. And now he's walking around with confidence. Hey, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Nope. Look at the other thing, a part of the thing that was the thing. And you you notice they don't match because you didn't adequately fix my shit, man. I don't consider my shit fixed, man, until the, the thing is just like the other thing that's not broken. Fix my shit, man. And I go over and I said, oh, man. Let me go over there right now and hang out with your family a lot more who loves me. I think they keep asking me to come over and watch fights with them and stuff. Even though I prefer to watch fights in my own house with my own group of friends, I'm starting to think even though their television is smaller, I'm kind of liking the atmosphere. Maybe I should spend a whole lot of time with your family. Oh, yeah. Instead of just hanging out here near your family, maybe I should spend time with them. A lot of time with them. Oh, um, um, but, 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 you fix my shit, man. And once he realized I wasn't kidding, and once he realized his family liked me, and once he realized I wasn't kidding about hanging with his family and being there all the time just to make sure I could torture his punk ass, his punk ass eventually and finally fixed my shit, man. A job that should have, that could have literally taken about 45 minutes to complete and not that much money. He made me torture his punk ass for six months. And guess what? He fixed my shit, man. And I didn't mind torturing him. It was great because he shouldn't have done the dumb crap he did in the first place. And not only did I wind up getting my stuff fixed back to normal, back, I had no injury at that point. I had the joy of torturing a piece of crap for six months. Most people were going, why don't you just get on him right there and take him to small claims court or whoop his ass or something like that. Yes, I could have done that. I could have beat his ass. Right? Right? I could have sued him, right? But it was much more fun to ruin his punk ass life until he did what I needed him to do, which was repair the injury that he caused. What I learned a long time ago is a lot of times people think you're taking an L. And what that means is you're taking a loss. You lost in the you lost in this exchange. But sometimes it's not an L. Sometimes you're not really losing. Sometimes you're kind of setting something up. Yeah. It's like it's like when you watch a football game, American football. I know that some of the people, some of the listening to me are overseas. Well, I'm talking about football. I mean, American football. Sometimes you're in a game where it's really tight. Both teams have good defenses and the offenses are having trouble moving. And it was fourth and one. Why don't you go for it? Why are you punting? Well, then you realize that 
both teams have good defenses. And if your punter punts, he can probably back the other team back to the one. And if your defense does what it normally can do, they'll be stopped. And when they punt, you'll be in even better position than you were when you punted the ball back. It's called playing field position, right? And that's what I did. I couldn't whoop his ass. I didn't want to go to jail for whooping his ass. I didn't want to take him to small claims court. I didn't have the time. But I did have time to do the things that I did, which is ruin his punk ass life until he did what needed to be done, which was fix my shit, man. So all I'm saying is, folks, don't always think that you're going to get the, the win right away. Sometimes you got to lay in wait and let the other people think they've won and they're sitting there smiling, thinking they got it all won. And then you come out of nowhere, you get into the running position, you aim at them, you run at a high rate of speed, you jump in the air until you're horizontal and then bounce your size 12s off the person's chest, a.k.a. drop kicking the bastard. Now, I didn't actually drop kick the bastard. I only metaphorically drop kicked the bastard <laughs> but his ass got drop kicked and my shit got fixed that's right he fixed my shit man let that be a lesson <laughs> segment over guys and gals let me tell you something the weather right now kind of sucks you know, I, it's not the cold. The cold doesn't bother me too much. I'm an East Coast guy. I grew up on the East Coast. I was raised on the East Coast. So cold weather is not really that big of a deal. I'm used to it. I know when it's coming and I'm prepared for it. You just pull out the coats and all of that crap. That that, that, that No one cares about that. Even though I spent a decade, a decade of the 90s in California, and, you know, you know, you get there's the heat and all of that kind of crap. But let me tell you something. I don't like what happened today weather-wise. Today the weather kind of sucked. I'm not, you know, let's take kind of really sucked because when I walked outside, what was out there? Sleet and slush, right? Now, if somebody says, well, there's going to be freezing rain. A lot of the times what happens is the only thing that you got to worry about is power lines and crap like that. But I don't really have to worry about that too much. So freezing rain is not that big of a deal. You know, most of the time when you, when it rains outside, if you don't catch the bus or have to catch cabs or anything like that, I'm driving all the time. So it doesn't really matter what's going on outside. It's going to be 15 degrees outside. Yeah, well, it won't be 15 degrees because I'm turning on the heater. In my car, it'll be 70. Well, it's going to be 99 degrees outside. Doesn't matter. In my car, it's going to be 70. It's raining outside. I don't care. In my car, it's going to be dry. But there are certain weather things, weather events that happen that make it horrible no matter what. And one of these was one of them. The sleet and slush and being sleet and slush sucks. You see, if it was actually snow, at least snow looks good, right? At least snow, you can look at it. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Mm-hmm. You know, you take out your camera, you go to the window. Mm, snow's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, let me get a picture of this snow before anyone walks in it. It's beginning to look a lot. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is great. I can make a postcard out of this. I can make a picture of this and put it on Instagram and Facebook and Doublegram and Double Twitter and Triple Crap and all of that crap. You think it looks good. It looks beautiful, but slush never looks good. Have you ever, ever, ever seen anyone send you a postcard when it was freezing rain and slush outside? What would the holiday be, huh? It's beginning to look a lot like you're getting fired. Happy getting fired day. It's nice and slushy outside. You thought you guys were too old to get have a baby. You're both 50 years old. You stopped wearing condoms and she's pregnant again. Hey, your kid got got was in a fight at school and got beat up by 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 somebody because he was doing something stupid and he lost the fight and it's on Instagram and everyone's seen your kid getting their ass whipped by someone who shouldn't be able to whip his ass. But here's your slush car. It's slush sucks. And it's been slushy outside. If it was a little bit more, if there was some snow, at least you could get into it. But with slush, you still have to go outside and you still have to shovel and you still have to put down the salt and you still have to do all of that crap. And you're going, wait a second. This sucks. 
People actually drive better in the snow. If there's snow, people actually sometimes, some people, some people will actually snow, slow down because they see the snow, but not in the slush. Oh, no, in the slush. No one slows down because, well, apparently for some people, slush is invisible. Like the people that were driving behind me a few hours ago. I'm going someplace to get something and I realize, oh, no, there's no place, no way to get to that place except to go down this long hill. That is one of those streets that is, let's be, let's put it this way, treated last, right? It's not one of those streets that gets the immediate salt treatment or the pre-treatment or any of that crap. It's get, there you go. You got the salt left after we've done the streets that actually matter to us. We do. OK, now you can go to that punk ass street that that's Anthony has to drive for across to get to the place where he wants to go. But wait until it's the last minute. And they did not salt that area. So I'm going down this hill because I have no choice but to go down this hill. There's no other way but to get to the place I'm going, uh, but to go down this damn hill. And I'm going down the hill. And behind me is one of those jackasses who obviously can't see sleet. Apparently, in their mind, there's some kind of structural problem that makes sleet invisible to them. It's almost as if it's not there. It's almost as if in their mind, it's sunny and 70. They got brand new tires and someone put a slight sicky, sticky substance on the street so it's okay to drive at a higher rate of speed because their brakes will work extra good right <laughs> that's not the case bastard so this jackass is tailgating me on the slushy wet frozen street where i can actually feel the car sliding i am now sitting there bracing for impact and this piece of crap is behind me calling me all sorts of names and motioning with his hand to tell me i should be driving faster even though i can see his car sliding i can see it i can see it and if i can see it and i'm not in his car then that bastard should feel it but he's too busy yelling at me oh no i tap on the brakes and i stay on the brakes and my car's still sliding, and I stop at the stop sign properly because I'm driving responsibly. This jackass comes within a couple of inches of the back of my car, and I st uh, begin going and moving again, and this jackass tries to stop, slides into the intersection a little bit, but that's not enough to make him decide, baby, I want to start driving safely because the man's an idiot. He's still tailgating and yelling and yelling and yelling and yelling, and I use my turn signal and I pull over and he zooms right past me and starts driving faster because he's angry because I didn't want to drive in a way that I'm, I'm going to kill myself or someone else and then after he pulls out and keeps going on I now park pull back into the street and start driving again and now I'm behind the bastard and you would figure that would be the end of it all he wanted to do was get in front of me right all he wanted to do was get in front of me but oh no that's not it now he's yelling and screaming and motioning into the rear view mirror at me and not looking in front of him because he's an idiot he does not see that the light that was green a moment ago is now yellow but he's still yelling at me and he doesn't see that it's now red because he's an idiot and i'm looking at him and i'm pointing and pointing and pointing and pointing and he's looking at me and he thinks i'm motioning to him like f you f you when i'm really saying there's a red light and you're accelerating you dumb bastard and he turns around and he sees the red light slams on his brakes and slides into the intersection and almost gets hit by a bus the people get off the bus his car is still stuck in the intersection because now he's in this big thing of ice and the people getting off the bus are yelling at his punk ass you dumb bastard you motherfucker the guy on the bus the guy drove bus the bus driver gets up you dumb bastard you motherfucker you dumb bastard and they're cursing this punk ass out and now he feels like crap he feels like crap because he was tailgating me and now he realizes how what a piece of crap he was and he realizes what i was trying to avoid was what just happened to him and i calmly drive around his car and i don't even look at him and i take a quick peek at him and he's trying not to catch eye contact well not with me anyway because he's getting eye contact from all the people on the bus and the bus driver who've now got out and started cursing at him because it's a piece of crap and i drive around him and go where i'm going and what am i doing now laughing my ass off because people are sometimes dumb I never understood that concept. When you know it's a bad street, don't drive like that. Don't drive like that. Right? And the whole time I keep my calm composure and my smooth voice like this. Shouldn't I be one of those quiet storm guys? Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Right? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be kind of cool if you're driving in the car and you find out that you're, yours truly, your one of your podcast favorites, 
not only continues doing his double genius. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you guys. <clears throat> I was officially upgraded to triple genius, but I don't want to brag about that. <laughs> Actually, I was upgraded to quadruple genius, but I don't like to talk about it too much. <laughs> I'm a quadruple genius. Back to what I was saying. But wouldn't it be kind of cool? That even see, see how I kept my composure when even that jackass almost ran into me and caused an accident? Wouldn't it be great if I kept the same smooth voice that you're hearing right now and became one of those quiet storm guys? I want to be one of those dudes. I want to do it. Even if it's not a regular gig, I just want one time to be able to be one of those quiet storm guys. I have, a, I have an affinity for those quiet storm guys because... I remember throughout my 20s and 30s when I would, you know, I would drive to girlfriends' houses or if I would drive to pick them up to take them back to my house, you know, because when you're when you're not living together, most of the time your your woman and I and I didn't know this at the time, but most of the time your woman kind of doesn't want to be around you as much when their time of the month is, you know, they'll make an excuse not to be around you. Um, well, they're always busy, but because just like you, they've been waiting. If you're a busy person and they're a busy, busy person, they've been waiting all week long because you're there, you know, you're the person they're getting it on with. So they want to, they want to be, when they're around you, they want to jump on top of you, you know? So, you know, and so quiet storm music was always playing when I would go over to a girlfriend's house or she would call me, why don't you come up and pick me up and we can go back to your place? You know, and, and so I would put on the music and then the quiet, doom, 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 the quiet storm, beauty, beauty, doom, doom, oh yeah, go be with your lady, mm, doom, 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 you need to be with her and she needs to be with you, doom, doom. now a song from Maxwell, right? I wanted to be one of those guys, I wanted to be one of those guys, but I realized it's probably best that I'm not one of those guys because I know me and I know they would give me a script and I would kind of not listen to the script and probably start being a little too honest with the quiet storm stuff. I don't know if that's a good thing. Sometimes with quiet storms, you, you kind of got to keep it simple. You know, you just say some, Oh yeah, a few, Oh yes. And the old lady, your lady, your lady. And then you go about your business. But I'm telling you right now, there's a, a strong possibility that if they had the S. Anthony Quiet Storm, it might be a little do 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 this is S. Anthony Thomas do 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 and the S. Anthony Quiet Storm do 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 you need to be with your lady. Do, 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 do. And your lady needs to be with you. Do, 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 do. The night is right. Do, 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 do. Your smile is bright. Do, 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 do. And her dress is tight. <laughs> On the ride over, you're thinking about her curves. Mm, do, do, do. And she's thinking about you. Do, 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 do. You picture her taking a bubble bath to get ready for the night. Do, 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 do. And you. Do, 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 do. This time you washed your balls twice. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. You call up your lady to let you know you're on the way. Do, 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 do. And you know it's your birthday. Do, 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 do. And like she promised you last year, tonight, mm, do, do, do. You get to do stuff weird stuff with her buttocks do 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 but there's a problem do 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 this time she's got a surprise for you do 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 because she's going to catch you off guard by saying if you get to do stuff to her buttocks she also gets to do stuff to your buttocks do 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 all of a sudden you're going maybe i don't want to do stuff to her buttocks do 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 she goes well if you don't do it now it ain't gonna happen again till next year you better just get what you can get do 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 and go all right do 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 then you try to be slick and try to offer something else something you've been begging for even more than doing stuff to her butt do 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 
You try to get her to invite her cute friend who looks as, almost as good as she does. Do, 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 do. But she was prepared for this request, dumbass. Do, 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 do. She said, sure, I'll invite her. Do, 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 do. But she's also going to bring a friend with her. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. His name's Bill. Do, 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 do. Your side of the phone is silent. Do, 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 do. She thought she got you this time. You're so busy trying to make her do or try to trick her or try to coerce, coerce her into doing weird crap she's kind of into but doesn't want to do all the time. Do, 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 do. But she taught you a lesson by saying, sure, I know you've been eyeing my friend up and you want to try to bring her in and get it on with her as well. Try to do that three the three people thing do 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 but i introduced bill to teach you a lesson do 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 but she doesn't realize the reason you're so you're on the on your side of the phone quiet do 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 it's because well <laughs> surprise she doesn't know you've already been banging bill do 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 the only thing you want to do is try to act like what you and bill are doing while they're doing stuff you're going to try to act like it's the first time you've done it do 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 the quiet storm. Do 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 do. You people are weird. Do 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 do. Now I'm gonna go on back to my quiet place. Do 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 and do stuff to my woman's butt. Do 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 do. Cause it's also my birthday. Do do do. Okay, my quiet storm would be a little weird. <laughs> but I always associated the quiet storm music with going to see a girlfriend. You know, I always did. Now I just I just kind of like the music, you know. You, you get a little older, you start listening to, to, to different type of stuff, you know. When I when I was younger, it was all music about punching a dude and kicking a dude's ass, and man, my car's better than your car. And my girl, yeah, that your girl wants me, but your girl don't want you, but she wants me, but there, yeah. And I got more money than you got, and you ain't got any money, but I got double money, and whatever money you got, I got triple money. And then, then I kick your ass. You can't kick my ass, but I can kick your ass. Me, me good, me, me, me good, me good. You bad, me good, me better, me better. You worse, you worse. And now all of a sudden I find myself listening to like, you know, I mean, I always listen to Prince. It's my favorite entertainer, but, but you know, it's really weird. And I start to feel like an old guy and I don't like that crap. I really just, I, I, it's it's just weird. I was sitting back and I was on the, on the, on the Mr. BS show. I was talking about how sometimes um, you get caught in these loops on, on, uh, on YouTube. And I got caught in a loop. Now, it it was me. I, I, I said, me, you know what I want to do? I want to look up some 90s era R&B. And I started listening to it. And I go, yeah, I remember this one. Yeah. And he starts singing along. And then you find another, I remember this one. Yeah. And he starts singing along. And I remember this one. Yeah. And he starts singing along. And I go, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to listen to some 90s era hip hop. That's what I'm going to do, damn it. And you, you start listening to a tribe called Quest and all that. Hey, these are perfect. I love this stuff. And somehow over the course of the next two hours, when I only wanted to do this for like a half an hour, somehow I started out going from listening to <laughs> listening to R uh, 90s era R&B songs and now I'm sitting there and I'm looking up theme songs from TV shows that came on when I was like two like the theme song from Chico and the Man and I'm sitting there going how the hell did I go from listening to R&B from the 90s and now I'm listening to the theme song from Chico and the Man this is really weird. I mean, I was a little, I was like a baby when this show was on the air. I don't even, this is just, this is some good ass singing though. I mean, this whole say Feliciana's tearing this song. That's some good stuff. Yeah, yeah, Chico and the man, the man. Yeah, this is good stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I wonder what other TV theme songs are on here. I wonder if, uh, I used to like Remington Steel. I wonder if I can remember the theme song from Remington Steel before I look it up. Hmm, let's see, let's see. Remington Steel. I used to watch it all the time. I used to have a big crush on Stephanie Zumblis. I don't know. I mean, it's really, a, really, I was like in love with that woman. You know? Yeah. 
I think that's it. Let me think of. Let me look up the theme song. Let me tell steals. I was right. I knew it. Wow, it's like being in a game show. Uh, let's see, I haven't, uh, let's see, you know, what other the shows have I not seen in a while, damn it. Let's see if you remember the theme song of somebody. What other, oh, oh, yeah. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. Heart to Heart. I used to be in love with Stephanie, the, 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 the Mrs. Hart. I was in love with Mrs. Hart back in the day. Yeah, I think that's it. Let me play it again. Ah, I'm two for two, damn it. Oh, yeah. I'm the man. I'm the best at this contest that no one else is participating in that's happening at two o'clock in the morning because I can't go to sleep and I should probably go to sleep because I got a lot of stuff to do, but I'm I'm on a roll now, damn it. I got two of them. Two in a row. I'm the best. All right, let me think of some something else. As some kind of a... a uh, 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 chips, chips. I haven't seen that in twenty years. Uh, what's the theme song from Chips? Hold on, I, I'm not gonna. I, I got Chips. I, I'm not gonna push the button until I can remember the theme song from Chips. Hold on, hold on. Damn it! I got to. There's a lot of pressure on me right now. I got those two in a row. I don't want to let the people down. Granted, there are no people, and I'm being an idiot, and I'm probably a little dopey because I've been awake for a long period of time, and I haven't had much sleep lately, and I don't know why I'm humoring myself for having a contest against nobody, against theme songs, but no one gives a crap about because there's nobody here but me. But damn it, I did that. All right, let's look up chips. <laughs> Yeah, three for three. I'm the best. You out there with your Nobel Peace Prizes and saving human beings? Get that crap out of here. I've known uh, three dung theme songs from shows I haven't seen in two decades. Three in a row. That's what's really important. Time Magazine Person of the Year. I'm gonna be the Person of the Year next year because that's three in a row. You know, I'm the best. You know. Okay, what else? What other shows have I not seen? What's that one with Jack Tripper and them two hot babes? And Three's Company. I haven't seen that in a long time. What's the theme song from that? Hold on, damn it. If the four for four, I should get a gold medal for this, damn it. Four for four. Come on, I'm gonna do. Leave and wait. I think that's it. I think that's it. Let's play it. Come on, Uncle. Yeah, I'm the best. I can't be stopped. Nothing is better than me. I know small portions of theme songs of shows that I watched when I was a kid and somehow still remember the crap. And I don't know why this is important to me right now. But should I go for another one? Should I press my luck? Should I press my luck? I don't know. I don't know. This is just with him. I don't know. Oh, no. The next one that comes up is Mr. Belvedere. Oh, crap. This is going to be a tough one. I don't know if I... Streaks on the channel never mattered before. Who cares? If you drop kick your jacket when you don't do All right, play it. Streaks on the channel. Yes! I even got Mr. Belvedere right. I am the best human being that has ever lived. Why is there no religion built around me? I remember a handful of theme songs from shows I don't watch anymore. I am a superior human being to everybody. Oh my goodness. Why is there, why do I not have a reality program right now called S. Anthony remembers theme songs of shows he doesn't watch anymore? Why is there not someone here as a testimony to my greatness? Oh God. This is, this is, this is incredible. I mean, I, I'm surprised that hot babes haven't just come bursting into this room and jumped on top of me begging me to, 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 to have my baby because they want to take this level of greatness and advance it further oh god you know but i don't want to press my luck because you, you, you press your luck sometimes and you know you know you, you don't you don't want to do it you know i just uh 
Should I do one more? I don't know. Because if I've been so great up until this point, I might disappoint, disappoint the universe who's all waited on bated breath for more of my double gene, quadruple genius. I should probably stop right. I mean, I've already cemented my legacy and I'm already in the hall of fame of dudes remembering small snippets of obscure television programs that he no longer watches and probably won't watch at any point in the future. I don't want to press my luck. I don't want to do it, but there's a chance. There's a chance if I do one more. No, I think I've already cemented my legacy. I should just stand on the podium on the shoulders of other great men who've done something as important as remembering small snippets of TV programs he doesn't care about. I think I should now just walk away undefeated you know i know there are going to be people out there who are going to try to call me back into the game to challenge my greatness to try to build their name off of me some young whippersnapper some young upstart's going to remember a couple of ty- couple of theme songs and some shows <laughs> ain't going to try to challenge me uh, are you miss anthony thomas yes i am <laughs> I'm the new king, now that you've retired. And all I keep hearing about is how great you are and how unstoppable you are. But let me tell you something, old man. I may not have your records and I have a couple of losses, but I think I can take you down. Oh, you do? I'm a tired kid. I mean, if you're great right now, enjoy your time. Enjoy your greatness and your time. You shouldn't waste your time bothering people such as myself who are far superior to you even as a human being on the genetic level and you're a worthless piece of crap in my presence. Don't worry about me. Be great in your own time. I heard what you just said. I know I just said it in your face, loser. Why don't you come out of retirement and take my challenge? I don't have time to take your challenge, punk. Does that mean you're scared? Huh? Does that mean you're so scared we should take your name off the the trophy? How dare you, you little punk. You think you can challenge me? I can challenge you, punk. Yeah, I'll just use your catchphrase back to you, punk. Oh, you're asking for it, kid. I'm back one last time. <laughs> gotcha. You ain't gonna be in undefeated after this, old man. Now, do you know the theme song? Yes. Everyone leans forward. The great one has returned one last time. Can he be stopped by this new whippersnapper trying to knock him down? The kid is confident that he's challenged the great S. Anthony Thomas. Now, quite frankly, S. Anthony Thomas' legacy is assured. But this is one of those moments. Is he going to ruin his legacy by coming back and not just staying off in the sunset? Is he? Okay, old man. The theme song? Yes. From Laverne and Shirley. Oh, oh my God, not that. He hasn't seen Laverne and Shirley since he was a little boy. He hasn't even seen, he hasn't even seen it in syndication. Oh, no. We might be seeing the great one go down. Kid, that's dirty. You did your research, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Why don't you forfeit now so we can take your name off the trophy and laugh at you because now there's a new king. Kid, I only have one thing to say for you. To you. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, H. Lamille, Shlamazel, Haas and Pfeffer Incorporated. No! Exactly, punk! Don't you ever try to challenge me. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just seen something spectacular. The great S. Anthony Thomas, out of retirement, comes back and destroys the number one contender and the champion, the current champion, destroys him, crushes him, kills him. He tried to be a slick bastard. He did some research and found out that S. Anthony hadn't seen Laverne and Shirley since he's a little boy, and he thought he got him. But S. Anthony just slipped in the theme from the beginning of the theme from Laverne and Shirley and crushed him. Not only is S. Anthony's legacy secure, but he just ruined and destroyed that boy. I'm sorry I had to do that to you, kid. I was trying to embrace you and hand off the baton to you. And now I've crushed you. I should have left you alone, man. You should have left me alone, punk. 
I should have sang more of the song, but I wanted you to be able to be able to face your family. I thank you for at least letting me do that. <laughs> no, now you're rubbing it in. You're damn right. Look at your family. They just pulled off and left you. Here's some change for the bus, punk. You're dismissed. Can't believe you're going to try to challenge me. I'm the best. I'm the king. I'm sorry you guys had to hear that, everybody. But sometimes when these young punks try to show up and try to teach you a lesson, you got to make an example of them. Now I'm going to go back into retirement. And if that's a lesson for anybody else who wants to challenge me, I'll crush you and destroy you in this game. Don't even think about it, punks. Try to challenge me. That's why his life's over. It's ruined. Punk ass. Lesson learned. Oh, and segment over. Well, folks, this has been episode number 246, 246 of the S. Anthony Says podcast. And I want to thank you guys and gals around the world very, very much for listening. I appreciate it. Um, do me a favor. If you love the show and you do, do me a favor. If you, uh, if you, if you want a podcatcher that allows you to leave a rating, please rate and review positively, you bastards. Rate and review the program. I would appreciate it. Um, tell your friends, if you think you have friends that would like this crap, let them know, force them to listen. If they don't listen, please viciously slap them until they do. <laughs> okay. Do not slap them. Just tell them that they, that they would like it and have them listen to the show as well. Um, if you want to contact yours truly, you can do it via email. And the email is talk to s anthony at gmail dot com. I love hearing from you. T T A L K T O, of course, s anthony at gmail dot com. Follow me on social media. I am on Twitter. My personal Twitter for me, s anthony, is s anthony thomas is a at s anthony thomas. The Twitter for the show is at s anthony says. I'm on Instagram, and of course, surprisingly enough, I'm on Instagram as S. Anthony Thomas. Amazing, right? This show can be heard on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, um, Google Play Store. This, the show can be heard on iHeartRadio. And, of course, the Podcast Revolution Network. I'm everywhere, baby. And, if, and as, as it turns out, the show actually has its own website, and you'll never guess what it is. Drum roll. Brrr. S. Anthony says dot com. Much love to everybody in every part of the world that is listening to this. Much love to my uh, North American sass bastards. Much love to my my uh, United Kingdom sass bastards, my Australian sass bastards, my Canadian sass bastards and my sass bastards in all parts of the world that are beginning to listen. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your kind words. You guys are some cool bastards, and I really, really appreciate all that you do. Much love to everybody, and I will see you next week. It doesn't matter to me whether you're listening to me when you're riding a lawn, if you're riding a lawnmower, you're in your car, you're at the gym with your earbuds in, you're skydiving, walking down the street, working out. I don't care what you're doing. Thank you for having me in your ears, in your minds, and in your hearts. And I'm going to say goodbye the way I always say goodbye. And I want you to say it with me on the count of three. Are you ready? Of course we are. Fantastic. One, two, three. S. Anthony. Out.